Hi all, welcome back. So in this particular video, we will be looking at proposal writing, which are part of report writing. We will be specifically looking at the do's and don'ts of the proposal writing. I will be sharing my insights and I will be also providing you a simple guideline to get started with proposal writing. So by the end of this particular video, most probably you will have a very clear cut idea of how to write a good proposal. But before starting today's session, it would be nice if you can refer to my previous video where I have already explained the first part of the video, that is the mindset, the data collection part, as well as how to analyze your data and generate reports. Okay. So with this, let's start today's session. So next is report writing. So let's look at some of the pointers that you should follow in this. So first thing is proposal. So think your proposal as you have an idea and you are asking organization for permission to work on that particular project. So you have talked to your owner, you have asked for the data, they have given your data and you just want to analyze your data, but you have to ask for a permission. That's what your proposal actually is. It is just asking for permission and make sure that you keep it brief and strictly follow the rubrics given for the proposal. So if you don't know, you can click on this link and this is your BDM Capstone project primary data rubric and it is for 225. So if I scroll down, so you can see all the flow and everything which is present here, right? But you should focus on this particular thing, how you have to do your work. First, you have to have a declaration statement. That means I am from an organization or a company and I will be using your data for your use case. Okay. Next, you have to discuss a business problem and it should not be a complete one. Okay. Next, you have to write an executive summary and title. So what is executive summary? So executive summary is a summary of whatever you have written, but in a very short way so that if people don't even read all these steps, they can directly see it from here. And it is very important that you write that particular thing at the very beginning. Next is you have to include your organization background. What does it mean? It means the company that you're working with. You have to include some of the details of the company, like when it was established, what problem it is facing and who is the owner of that part. That's what I did in my process. Next is problem statement. You have to list it as objectives. So you can take two or more than two problem statements, but it should conclude that there are sub points. Make sure that you strictly adhere to 100 to 120 words and it should be in point words and not in paragraph. That's very important so that it can directly go the person that you're working on this particular problem. Okay. Now next focus on what is the background of that particular problem. So why this problem arise? Just by talking to the owner, you can get this particular thing. You have to list that in 200 to 250 words. Now next is problem solving approach. How you are going to solve that particular problem? Don't include what all you are going to do. Just include how you are going to do that particular problem. Like you can refer to some steps that you are going to follow in order to fix those problems. So this is just to explain what you are going to do. This is just a thought process that you have to follow. Okay. So don't be very elaborative but yes include 400 words now what should we include in problem solving so first what are the methods with justification so this in implies that you have already done your analysis if you haven't done your analysis just give a brief about it okay now details about the intended data collection with justification you have to include that metadata mostly here in this sense okay now, details about the analysis tool with justification. Which tools are you using? So, if there is a very large data, you can use Python. You can say that Pandas can handle a large set of data. So, that's why I'm using that. So, all those things you can do. Now, word breakdown structure, WBS chart we call it. And there is a Gantt chart also. So, these two you can directly go to Google and search it, right? So, let me show you google.com and I will say WBS chart template so if I, I just show you this simple chart I expand it you can see that how simple it is right so here what you are going to do is for each of the tasks add a heading to that and what are the subtasks that you are going to do in this particular thing that you have to include now similarly if I go for a Gantt chart you can see this so this is how your Gantt chart actually looks and you can see that you have included your months and you have to list your task here and what are the expected outcomes so what you are planning to achieve with this that you have to focus on this particular section okay once you have done that your proposal will be completed you have to just submit that regular proposal 